Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Jalen Says. And today we're going to be with Miss Lisa Dilton from Dropback Studios. And let's get to start off with some other things right now. The Shoot Your Shot Music, uh, the Shoot Your Shot Film Festival. Sorry, I was thinking about something else right now. But the Shoot Your Shot Film Festival is uh, coming out very soon. Uh, it's going to be from tomorrow to the next couple of days, to the 15th, I believe. And yeah, it. If you remember last interview on Tuesday, there was a lot of people who are in communications with it. And Miss Nia Hill, who has her own movie coming out there, Colored My Mind. Can't wait to see it. And if you guys are in the area too, please check it out. There should be some information on my Facebook. And if you just look up Shoot Your Shot Film Festival on YouTube, Facebook, things like that, it should pop up and you could see a lot more of it. So Hey guys, remember, look for it. It's it's going to be pretty cool. But today's interview is going to be with Miss Lisa Dilden from Dropback Studios. And she does a lot of stuff with her um, uh, Dropback Studios. She uh, does photography. She does a lot of other cool things that helps out with the industry. I guess this is like an industry full week today. So to introduce herself even further... Here's Miss Lisa. How are you doing today? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Are you able to no. see me? I know it's a little uh, dark. A li- yeah, it's a, it's, it's a bit dark. It's a bit dark. Uh, but to get the start off. Yeah, Sorry. Can see better. <laughs> yeah. But to get the start off, who is Miss Lisa? Excuse me? Who is Miss Lisa? I am a mother of six children. I own Dropback Studio. I am from California. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So starting this off, what was your life like at a young age? What made you want to get this? Was this planted as a seed to have this studio or what did you think you were going to do? As a kid? Yes. This wasn't on my agenda, honestly. Um, as a kid, I wanted to be an attorney. But things transpired in my life, and I wasn't able to do that. So okay. just growing up, um, raising six children, I worked a full-time job, and <clears throat> got kind of burned out on that. So I started seeking other adventures, and this happened to be one, the studio. Wow. All right. All right. So on your road path from wanting to become a lawyer to what you're doing now, what were the steps? What made you, I guess, shift to this area? And what were you doing until you got to this area? Um, I was the project manager for large property management companies. And I got kind of burnt out. Mm. Okay. So I wanted to do something where it wasn't a nine to five and I would be able to assist other people. So is that where studio and um, photography and all this came to mind? Yes. Okay. Yes. So how um, long... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. You see, you seem like you're about to say something. So I wanted to offer a platform where I would be able to assist others um, on their journey to another level. I wanted to be a positive role model and kind of help lead them in the right direction. Okay. 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 So with leading in the right direction and doing all of this helping, how long have you been in this helping industry leading? Well, I've been helping for a long time. I've housed a lot of children. Wow. Um, I've helped a lot of people. Um, so this kind of fits right into it. It's just not a nonprofit. Okay. So how long have you had the studio? A little bit over a year. Okay. Okay. Maybe 13 months. All right. All right. When being a part of a studio and doing all these things, how do you feel from a part of, you just said housing children and helping other people. So what, how is it different to you? Cause I know that's a, big ballpark to have all this equipment, do all this stuff and manage it all. So how did it feel for you? 
it's a challenge sometimes because this is new. I have no um, no experience in this. So every day is a, a learning experience. But the people that have come in the studio, they have given me great knowledge, uh, advice. Um, I'm not a person that thinks that I know everything. So I learn from each person that comes in the studio. Okay. I've okay. been blessed to have a lot of good people surround me. Okay. Wow. What made you want to add this to your, I guess, resume, add this to your things that you're already doing? Because taking care of kids is housing kids. That's a lot of, that's a lot of stuff. And then switching over to the studio, which is also a lot of stuff. What made you want to switch over to this area? Just honestly, um, wanted to do something different. And but how do I explain it? So helping the helping kids now, young adults and all, that kind of happened organically. That wasn't my plan. My plan was to just have a studio um, for podcasting and for photography. But it most of the time, a lot of times, I'm assisting um, young adults. Okay. Wow. So with podcasting and things, do you have your own podcast? No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I have a space where I offer creators um, an opportunity to just be creative. Do you ever think of having your own podcast? Sometimes, yes. Okay, sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, all right. All right, with helping all these people, because you just said that you've been in this industry of helping for a, 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 a while, a while. What, right. what do you do to help people out there? Um, as far as the studio? Well, with everything you do. With everything I do, um, I mentor a lot. Uh, I help a lot of people that are in need. Not in a monetary sense always. Um, sometimes, but most of the time, not. Um, <laughs> I try to just guide people in the right direction okay. for help, for assistance. All right, all right. With becoming a mentor, what did you learn about yourself to teach to the youth and other people? And how do you feel when you can, I guess, make people's lives better and lead them into a better direction? It feels good. Sometimes it's draining. Sometimes it's frustrating when you can't really help a person the way you want to. You can't give them everything that they need. And sometimes that's frustrating. But overall, it's a beautiful thing to watch people blossom, especially in this industry. Yes. So how did you learn how to mentor? Um, Probably from my own past life experiences. What did your past life A lot life of people mentored me growing up. Okay. What was the biggest thing that you held on to from, I guess, a younger age for your lifestyle? Uh, seeing a lot of successful people not help other people. Hmm. I saw a lot of people that were successful, but they didn't have the desire to reach out and help anybody else. And I never wanted to be that. I hope that answers your question. You're quiet. Yeah, it, it, did, it, did. <laughs> it did. It did. It did. Okay. Okay. So also you house some youth. How did that come about? Why did that come about? And how do you feel when you're doing it? Ah. Well, I raised six kids on my own, so sometimes some of my um, children's friends, they didn't have places to go or they had been kicked out of their homes and all, and I just wanted to house them and feed them until they were able to, you know, make things right with their parents or get into some type of program 
or whatever. I just didn't want to see any kids on the street. It wasn't very, just children, it was also adults. That's very kind and noble of you. When, all right, so to, to get back to a question I was having in mind, how old are your kids? <laughs> I have six, so the oldest is 39 and the youngest is 29. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Are your kids in the same field as you are? No. One, one. She's a photographer in Augusta. Okay. Do you ever think of, uh, I guess, grouping up to do stuff? Do you already group up to do stuff? Uh, you and your daughter for uh, photography. Do you guys group up to do stuff? Or Sometimes do we do. Sometimes. Learn? But she's like um, two and a half hours away. So it's limited. That's, yeah. Okay. So you mentor, you house people you you do studios you you do all this stuff how do you yeah, manage i don't it? have people i don't house people at the moment okay that's something that i've done in the past okay so how do you manage what you do already you just do it i don't have a choice when you raise six children by yourself you have to learn to just do it you don't have a choice what did you learn most about patients when raising six kids? Or just life in general when raising six kids? Um, each child's different. You have a rela relationship with each uh, child. You love them all the same. It's just that your relationships are different. And you have to learn to accept your child for who they are, uh, understand who they are, and try to guide them and direct them. in a positive on a positive course okay i think um as a parent sometimes we want to put our plans on our children and we have to allow our children to be individuals so that they can be themselves best selves oh, okay what did your kids teach you in life because sometimes you teach your kids sometimes you get some nuggets of wisdom from your kids. So what have you learned most from your kids? What have I learned most from my kids? Um, that's a tough one. So for some of my kids, mom shouldn't be so nice. I have to be stopped being so nice. And I have to become a little more selfish. Um, for some of my other children, I've learned to have more patience and understand where they're coming from. Does patience really help you in the studio industry? Yes. Yes, it does. What are some of the most things that, what are some of the things that could get you really impatient at times when first being a part of us being having a studio then with mentoring and other things not knowing everything and you have to you have to understand that you don't know everything um and sometimes that's frustrating because you have to be honest with yourself and say you know what i don't know when if someone were to ask me how to operate a light and sometimes people still ask me that i don't know how to operate a trigger light that's frustrating, but I have to be honest. I don't know how. And sometimes you have people that come in and they're in a bad place and you really can't help them. You you want to help them. You want to give everything that you have, but you can't. That's frustrating. Yeah. With your whole studio, how do you how do you feel that you've grown from when you first started it to not knowing how most of the stuff even works to now? I'm sorry. How do you feel that you've grown in your studio industry? How since not knowing how to use most of the stuff in the studio to where you are today? 
Um, I've grown a little bit. I've grown a lot, actually. And I've learned to listen. I've learned to pay attention. Um, I've learned to listen to photographers, videographers. I've learned to accept um, constructive criticism. Um, I've just learned how to be taught even when they're younger than I am. Okay. Where do you feel like you want your studio to lead to? I have no idea at this point. I take this thing day by day, <laughs> day by day. Day by day. Hopefully, um, I can continue to just help people wherever it takes me. Only God knows. Since starting your studio, have you felt more of a connection to industry? Like, have you thought of other industry things as an option for you? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Just depends on how the day goes. Um, I'm not there yet. I've learned more about the industry, but as far as diving a little deeper, not yet. I don't think I'm there yet. Okay. 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 With the things that you do, what things do you think you might want to do in the future? I think I want to do a nonprofit. Okay. Yeah. For, um, for young adults, mainly, um, teenage girls to help give, get them off the street and um, offer them some type of skill so that they would be able to support themselves. Okay. I hear you all the time talking about getting kids and uh, adults and people just off the street. What connection do you have to feel this way about it? Because I've been on the street before and I know a lot of people today that are on the streets and nobody really cares. There's a lot of people in this industry, they have nowhere to go. When no you got yourself back up from the street, what was your first step? To be thankful thank God and make sure that I would always give back to help me because a lot of, a lot of people um, came to my aid to assist me. So I always wanted to do the same thing for other people. Yes. I feel like we're only one person away from a life change. Okay. okay. Ooh, who has helped you through your, I guess, rough season time or when you were trying to get yourself off the street? Number one, I would have to say God. Um, two, um, some good friends. I don't, I care not to mention um, my children. My children are very supportive, but I don't want to mention friends on here. They may not want their names mentioned. Uh, you had, uh, a couple people just really helping you. How do you feel that they took some time out of their daily life to do this? And yes, they believed in me. They they believed in me. Um, they supported me a hundred. I've supported them. So it's just like a fair exchange, no robbery. Okay. When you see some conditions some places are in right now with a lot of more people getting on the street and a lot of more things happening in a negative way, what do you feel about it? And do you have any ways of trying to get to those areas? Vote. I think more people need to vote. Um, we, we often seem like our vote doesn't matter, but it does, especially our local votes. We need to start voting. 
if we don't vote, we don't have a voice. We have to start voting the right people in office. Okay. With your steps in what you're doing to help people and all of this from when you first started, how do you feel about who have you helped and what you've done to make an impact in the world around you? I feel good for the most part. Okay. Um, I'll just leave that there. <laughs> I'll leave that there. Uh, yeah, I'll leave that there. Okay. The, the other part of that answer is at another time. When looking at your day to day life and all the things that you do, what habits that you think you picked up about just from helping people, just from doing these things in your life? What habits have you picked up in your normal day to day life? Sometimes caring too much. It could be detrimental to yourself. Okay. okay. What? things you want to improve about yourself personally and for your daily life or just for you, I guess, spreading outwards? Um, becoming more selfish, selfish for myself and realizing I can't help everyone. How have you felt that <laughs> over selfishness? I mean, not self, yeah, selflessness has, I guess, compromised you in your life? Because a lot of times people tend to think if you care or you show um, any type of concern that you're weak or you're gullible, and it's not that. It's just that you have compassion. So you have to be careful who, who you attempt to help because it could be taken the wrong way. Have you seen a lot less of those opportunities since you've become more selfish of yourself and showing that you are not just giving away without, I guess, other people giving to themselves as well? Sometimes. Sometimes. I'm more guarded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just a bit more guarded. Okay. When you were younger in life and before you even thought of helping people, what did you do that you wish you were doing now or what some things from your childhood or younger things that you want to do now? I didn't understand that. From being a child, okay, I phrased it wrong. When you were a child and doing all the things, you probably stopped some of those habits from before, but what's some habits or things that you used to do as I guess, a younger person that you think that you should start doing again now? Um, as a younger person, what, what, what did I do younger that I would want to do now? Yes. Um, maybe swim. <laughs> Maybe swim. All right. When was the last time you got in a pool or I'm like Oh gosh. Uh maybe six, seven years. Wow. Yeah. You, you know, funny thing actually, um I uh used to be in like a lot of swimming classes and a lot of stuff. And uh my friend uh had a birthday party at a water park. So my mom was like, you know what? You should get back into the water to make sure you don't, you know, drown in there. So I got in there and it, it was a lot different from when I was like, when I was seven or eight, it, it, I, I, I was getting a little rusty. So, wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, so, so why do you think that is? I, I mean, I guess I haven't been in practice with it, you know? Yeah. 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 So maybe you should get back in the water too, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. My dad just <laughs> took me back out there again. And I, 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 this time I thought I was ready. I was not. But I, I, hey, I got a little further. So that's a, that's a plus. 
yes, yes, good. So you got to go again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're going to come in? You, you're you going to come with? <laughs> yeah, sure, of course. All right, all right. Well, that's a promise. That's a promise. I'm, I'm going to call you up one day. You, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what are some things, now talking about uh, benchmarks and progress, what are some things that, you find yourself having more progress in now and just being more skilled with? Um, becoming more focused on myself. Um, I'm, I, I see great progress in that. And I know that sounds selfish, but it's needed in my life, so. Okay. what do you want yourself to, what is your dream version of yourself? What do you feel like you should be most confident about? What type of person do you want to be the most? Um, I want to be a person that touch hearts. Um, I want to, be a person that makes a positive impact on 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 the world. I don't want to just exist. Okay. All right. All right. Well, I just pulled up some videos from Dropback Studios and it it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool. Just seems like you're really having fun with the photography and all the things. Do you find a lot more joy in this career that you think you would have? Sometimes, yes. That particular video wasn't at the studio. That was an edit at an event. Oh, wow. So you go into events too? Yeah, sometimes. All right. How do you feel when you get out there and do some events and things like that? Um, It's different. It's different. I'm really like a BTS person, so I have to push myself to do them. But, I mean, sometimes, you know, I just go out to network and say hi to some people and support. Yes. So do you think you're more of an introvert or extrovert? Introvert. I know you find that hard, right? Having a studio. But yeah. I think it's a way of, like, God challenging me. So do you feel like you should start to be more extroverted? Probably. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So you're going out, you're being at some events, you're meeting a lot of new people in the studio and you're doing all this cool stuff and you've only had it for 13 months, which is pretty, 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 pretty impressive. Pretty cool. Wow. Thank you. Right. Thank you. It's hard yeah. work though. Yes. Wow. Wow. So what gave you the name Dropback Studio? Um, I'm sorry. I, I'm getting several texts and phone calls. I am so sorry. Um, oh, no, so fun. I don't know. I just thought of it. Yeah. So uh, there's two names. So I have Backdrop Studios and I have Dropback. So because my studio is in the back of a building, I thought let's do Dropback in the back. Yeah. Okay. So what about backdrop studio? And the six two three is my birthday. Okay. Okay. So what six all right, so what is sixty three resemblance to drop back? That's my birthday, June twenty three. June twenty third. Okay. Oh. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess it was meant for you. I uh, yeah, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, or what other ways do you find yourself helping people out in the world? Oh, gosh. Counseling. Counseling a lot of people. I'm not a licensed counselor but I counsel a lot. Counsel, okay. So how, 
why and how and why yeah i have no idea how i have no idea why <laughs> So just oh, like was I the, just end up in that position. I just so end was it up just there. Like people just like saying, "Hey, can can you just give me some advice on this and things like that?" Yeah, so people just call me. Um, they're having an issue. I, I I think it's just my calling, honestly. I, I just like I can't escape it. Do I always want to do it? No. <laughs> just being honest. Okay. Do you think that could be an actual career for you? No. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know about counseling. Counseling. Yeah, that's just, there's a lot of stuff you need to know. There's a, a lot of stuff that you just need to help people on. Uh, you may not get for your, that. You may not get yourself because everyone's situation is different. Right. So how, how do you find yourself counseling? Because counseling and mentoring is, it's 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 a bit different because with mentoring in my mind you're speaking out to people you're letting them know how you got through things but with counseling right. they're asking you for answers on their own situation or they're just with asking, counseling you're talking people off the bridge sometimes wow with counseling you're you're um telling people that they can go forward in spite of what they're going through. With counseling, you're you're telling people that no matter what's going on right now, you can make it. You are trying to literally beat that inside of a person so that they don't give up on themselves. So how long have you been non-professionally counseling? Uh-oh, let me let that go. All my life. Mm. Get that, please. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. It's all good. All your life. Wow. <laughs> you can't see me anymore. Okay. So, yeah. It was Drop Black Studios for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow. But counseling all your life, that's, I mean, that, that's pretty impressive for everyone to feel like you could be a shoulder to cry on. Well, I, you know, I, I used to be a group counselor. Um, I was a battered women's um, counselor. Um, I just fell in that place. Okay. And I just have a question from uh, my mother real quick, which was, do you ever feel like you have some funny moments in the studio or any experiences that were something that you may not have been able to laugh at at the moment, but you're laughing at it now? Yes. Okay. What is that? I care not to disclose. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> okay. So what about some moments that weren't in the studio? or not confidential? What moments that you feel in life that you're like either really frustrated over or just something that happened, but now you just look back and you could just laugh at it? Okay, so we'll use the studio. Um, so when I started the studio, I'm like, well, how am I gonna do this? What am I doing? Oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> so now I look like, oh, okay, this is what God wants you to do. This is what you're doing. That's why I say, I don't know what I'm doing from day to day. It's all organic. So some of the things I do sometimes, I'm like, okay, God, I get it. Because there was no plan to this. I know that seems hard to believe, but there was no plan. So sometimes I just laugh and say, okay. So there was no plan to this. How, like, what was the process of this starting up if there was no plan to this at all? So I was praying um, and I was asking God, okay, God, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I want to do my own business. What can I do? And this is what came to mind. And I acted on it. And that's it, honestly. That's how this came about. I didn't know anything about this industry. Um, I didn't know anybody in this industry. I just, it was an act of faith. So it just happened. Yeah, I just, it was a faith walk. Wow, that's incredible. 
Okay. okay. I know that what might sound, sound hard to believe, but it's the it's the God honest truth. Yeah, that that's pretty that's pretty something. So it just came to you when you started it up. Wow. That is something. What other things in life have felt like a faith walk to you? Hello? Oh, no. Hello? Hello. Wow, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I'm so sorry. I was trying to decline the call and it answered the call. I do apologize. <laughs> No, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, but what things in life have felt like a faith walk to you? Oh, uh, wow. Life itself is a faith walk. Every day we wake up and we have an opportunity to start all over again. That's faith, right? Because we don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow. We have no idea. So when we're making plans for the following day, that's faith, right? We have faith that we're going to see tomorrow. Life is faith. It's like that our entire lives are faith walk. That's a, okay. So what have felt like the more, I guess, extreme faith walks to you? Like something that you wouldn't think of doing, like kind of like yes. how the studio appeared. The studio. The studio is clearly a faith walk. I don't know anything about this industry. I'm learning as I go. That, that's something. Do you ever think of the acting industry as something that you could, I guess, either be a part of or help? Because you said you like the behind the scenes aspect. So do you ever think of, I guess, either maybe directing, maybe being, I guess, a uh, supplier for a film crew or things like that? Yeah, if I can, I, I try to help out um, a few independent filmmakers. Okay. Independent filmmakers. What, I guess, contact have you done with it? What kind of experience have you done with it? I've done a couple of little clips and a few little um, short okay. films. Okay. Were you in it? A couple of them. Okay. How did you feel being in front of the camera? I don't like it. Mm. I don't like it. Okay. Maybe in time. Maybe in time. Did you feel like nervous or anything? No, I feel like I'm not seasoned in that area. So you feel kind of out of place in it? Yes. Because that's not my lane. I do it to help out, but that's really not my lane, you know? Yes. Hey, I mean, you are a very helping person. You help with mentoring, you help with counseling, you help with acting, even though that's really out of place for you. It's the help with acting is just like me filling in right quick for someone yeah. who's saying, Hey, they're like, Hey, will you do it? And I'm like, sure, 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 whatever. That's okay. as far as they go. Okay. Okay. Maybe more someday. Maybe. Maybe we never know. Yes. But um, as I was actually saying a little bit earlier, that today has kind of been an industry week because Tuesday we were just talking about the Shoot Shot Film Festival, which has a lot of more indie um, things, uh, indie films and things like that. So if you would like, we could put you in contact with some of those people. Awesome. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, sure. But Okay. Get the ball rolling again. Get the ball rolling again. When taking pictures, doing all this stuff, being out there, how have you learned to get a good shot? How do you feel about your shots now versus then? I don't take pictures. Oh. I don't take any pictures. Really? <laughs> yes. I have photographers rent the space, and they take the photos. I don't take any photos. I offer a creative space. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 no. How do you I feel? Do, I do the BTS behind the scenes. All the BTS that you see, I do that. Okay. How have you felt that your behind the scenes work has improved since when you started? Um, I think it's improved a lot. 
And it's actually fun sometimes. Most of the time it's fun. Yeah. Did it feel fun to you when you first started? No. (laughs) No. It was a bit awkward because I didn't know what I was doing. Like, can you, can you get, can you get the, uh, goth tape? Uh, can you, can you get, can you get the uh, ring? Can you get the thing? Um, yeah. 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 I had no idea what I was doing, but I figured it out. You figured it out and now you're having fun doing it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. What things have you done in earlier life that you didn't want to do, but now that you're doing it, you realize that it was a better thing for you? Ask me that question again. I'm sorry. What things in earlier, like an an earlier part of your life that you didn't want to do, but now that you've done it, you felt like this was something that you needed to do? Huh. Um, that's a tough one. You want me to let you think on it and ask you another one? Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Okay. When managing all the stuff that you do and being a single mother, what kind of things from being a single mother helps you managing with all the other things that you do now? What part of being a single mother helps you with managing things in day-to-day tasks? Um, you have to multitask. Um, you're raising six children on your own. It prepares you for all these different personalities. Um, you learn to, to not, to not judge. You learn to, um, try to see, where the need is and go from there. Um, You've learned to um, not be judgmental. Um, You just learn that you have to, you have to get in there and just dive in and do it. The outcome could be horrible if you don't. What was the most challenging thing about being a single mother? not wanting to fail. Um, Sometimes not being able to be your child's friend, having to um, step up and be a parent and sometimes disappointing your child. How did you feel when you felt like you didn't make the right choice for First, with the things that you do with helping people, but later after that, you answer that your children. I don't understand that question. Oh, uh, well, I guess let's first start off with your career. How do you feel when you do something that you felt wasn't the right choice for who you're helping at the time or what you're doing at the time? You learn to take an L and keep moving. Okay. How did you feel when you did something that you didn't feel was right for your kids? Um, I would apologize to my kids and say, okay, I made a mistake. I do apologize. Um, you have to own up to it. You have to make yourself available to be critiqued by your children. Even sometimes when it hurts. Because as a parent, you're not given a guidebook on how to be a parent. I mean, we people uh, produce those um, books, right? But every honestly, child is different. yes, being a parent is on the job training. Okay. But do you have an answer to my uh, question I asked before about things that you felt that you didn't want to do, but now? You after you've done it, you feel like this was something you should have done. Um, gosh, not really. I can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. No. Okay. If you ever have something pop in your head, just tell me. Just tell me. (laughs) But, But. All right, all right. Now we talked about your career. We talked about you helping people, mentoring, being a 
just doing all the things you do, what do you do to relax now? I go to the park a lot. Okay. You like the scenery? Yes. And I like the peace. It's quiet. I like to go to the park and just sit there and do nothing for like an hour or so. Sometimes longer. Do you ever think of picking up bird watching or what? No. <laughs> no. No. Do you ever think of picking up any other things like golf or anything? Because I heard that kind of relaxed people as well. No, no, I would be no good at it. No, maybe I'm um, walking more. I probably okay. need more exercise. Okay, okay. Walking, being at the park, chilling, doing that stuff. What do yeah. you do when you're home? Do you like cooking? No. Mm. <laughs> I hate it. When I'm home, I like to just like sit down. Um, I do a lot of research on a lot of different things. Um, sometimes, most of the time, I just sit there and do absolutely nothing. Uh, I am out most of the day, probably 12 hours out the day. That's, that's, that's some, that's a lot. So yes. you feel like your alone time is your most vital time now? Yes. And I get what you're saying about not wanting to cook because, like, I can cook, but there's just sometimes, like, I have to get up out of my bed, walk to the kitchen, <laughs> turn on the stove, wait for it to get hot because it's not even already hot. Yeah, I, I get what you mean. More than so for me, I've cooked for six kids for years. Yeah. I mean, you know, so you get to a point why, why you just don't want to do it anymore. Like, I like I had to cook for six kids. Like, why, why, why? That's six meals. Plus, yeah, like, I, even I don't you're want... gonna get burned out, right? Yeah, yeah, like, I, that's. That's a lot of cooking. Do you make good food when you did cook? When you do cook, I guess. Some meals. Yeah. <laughs> some meals. I'm not like uh like a gourmet cook. No. Yeah. I can cook some meals. Right. Basic meals. What's your comfort food? My comfort food uh, would be right here. This is my comfort drink, Starbucks. Okay. Um my comfort food would probably be baked chicken. Mm, okay. 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 You know, personally, me, it, it's like either one part of the day, either like just something simple or just like uh -huh. something really advanced that my mom never heard before. Cause like when I go out to eat, I'm just like, oh, that looks so interesting. And it just comes to me. Do you ever have times when you, go outside and just see things that give you inspiration to help people or just do things to your day-to-day -day life? Yeah, sometimes. Right. Like sometimes what? I see people jogging early in the morning and I'm like, you know what? I really should be doing that. I should attempt to do that. I haven't jogged in years. I admire people that can jog. Yeah. All right. All right. What do you get most, I guess, an influence from today in your day-to-day -day life? Where do I get? I'm sorry. Most of your influence for, I guess, helping people today. Um, I think a lot of people just don't have a heart. Hmm. It it doesn't it it doesn't kill anybody to like give someone a, a sandwich. It it won't. I mean, I, I think I think our country is in a bad place where we just don't care enough. Mm -hmm. And that just pushes me, that pushes me in a place to say, I don't want to be like that. Like, I think if, if everyone got together and decided, hey, I'm going to just help one person a day, we could change things, right? We could make a difference. So if you had one wish to change the world somehow, would that be it? 
if I had one wish to change the world? Yes. Um, what would I do? I would get rid of racism. That's, that seems like a good choice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it was racism. So everybody would be on the even playing field. Okay. Okay. Now, to, um, I guess, reach more out on my question I just asked. What is your biggest influence as a person in your life? Who influenced you the most to, I guess, either keep going or to not stop? A good friend of mine and my children. Okay. Ah, we're back in the dark again. Yeah. It's all fine. It's all fine. <laughs> so, what has your said friend helped you or influenced you most with your life in? To keep going in spite of when I'm um, not in a good place. Uh, mentally or if I feel like I just don't want to do it anymore and they push me and say you can give up you, you can't you have too many people depend um, depending on you or my kids are like no mom you got this you got this sometimes you're thinking no I don't <laughs> but you don't want to let your kids down you don't want to let your friends down and you don't want to let some other people down so So has not letting people down kind of been a boost for you to keep going in life? Yes. Yes. If if you could give a younger version of yourself one bit of advice, what would it be? Um What would that be? Forgive more and let things go. Okay. Okay. Forgiveness. All right. What do you think that you could have fixed if you had more forgiveness in you? Mm. I won't say I would have fixed, been able to fix anything. I think. I think I would have um, wouldn't have stagnated myself in certain areas in my life. If you don't forgive people, um, sometimes it causes stagnation in your own life. Have you reached your goal on forgiveness now? Do you feel like you are? Yeah. You feel like you're forgiven enough? Yes. With forgiving things in the industry's life, because I know there's a lot of things that might happen with owning a studio and doing all this stuff. How has that helped you? You don't take a personal. You can't take a personal. It's just business. And people are going to be people. Okay. Okay. I hope that no. answered your question. Yeah, it did. It did. It did. It did. Okay. Now, what do you want your, I guess, legacy to be to your friends and family and those around you? That they can continue to pursue their dreams in spite of anything that they've gone through. That you have to keep pushing. Yeah. You have to keep pushing forward regardless of what you've gone through in your life. And along the way, don't forget about people. Don't forget about people that have been in your corner. Okay. Now, I have one question I haven't asked in a little bit. If you had a whole week to yourself with a, I guess, 
$2,500,000 budget, you could tick anything off the list of things that you wanted to do, what would you be doing? What would I do? Yes. Whole week to yourself. No uh, things scheduled, no nothing like that. What would you do? I would take a cruise. I would take a cruise to probably like Alaska or something. (laughs) (laughs) Do you feel fascinated with cruise? Yeah, I it would just be good because you know you would totally disconnect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Do you feel like you will be doing that soon? Hopefully. Okay. Hopefully. Okay, why Alaska? I think it's pretty. I think it's pretty from all the pictures I've seen. It just looks pretty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a go-to place you want to go? Yes. It's on okay. a bucket list. All right. What else is on your bucket list? Um, Probably Italy. Okay. What about Italy? I would want to go shopping. Mm-hmm. I want to go shopping. Um, basically, that's it. <laughs> that's it. All right. All right. Well, um, now we're getting to the closing things and everything like that. Well, thank you, first and foremost, for coming on. But we talked about your studio a lot. We talked about you mentoring a lot. So where can people find information about both of those things? At Dropback Studio 623 on IG, uh, okay. Facebook, and I have a website, dropbackstudio623.com. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. for. And before you go, can you have, I guess, one quote or one word of advice to the audience out there? Uh, yes. Just remember, we're all one person away from a life change. Well, thank you for coming on. Okay, I hope everybody understood that quote. (laughs) I I mean, I got it. I got it. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and we will give you the information about the um, Jewish Shop Film Festival and all that. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And thank you to the ones out there in the audience. I kind of cut her off when she said bye-bye, but (laughs) bye. And thank you to the ones out there in the audience. Remember, from Tuesday, Chew Shot Film Festival. If you're in the area, please go check it out. There's going to be a lot of cool films on there. I know one that I would be really wanting to see, Colored My Mind, um, with Miss Nia Hill. And it was a great interview. Go make sure you check the last one. Make sure you check out all my interviews please and thank you. Make sure you share, like, subscribe to all that stuff. I really appreciate all the um, subscribers, all the shares, all the likes. I appreciate I really appreciate what you guys have done for it's it's been a bit, but you made it guys. You guys made it all worth it and I really appreciate it. And also it would mean a lot to me if you would support um on time somewhere and the guy behind it because he is going through some things right now and it would mean a lot to me it would mean more than the world to him if you were just to help out mr eddie bell and really support him because um his wife recently just passed away and that would I, i mean i don't even know what that would be like and it's, it's a lot. So please, if you guys can and you guys do have the time to, please support Mr. Eddie Bell and his kids and do all this stuff. Cash up. Let's go to work if you do want to donate. But I guess if you don't want to, I guess just being there, um, supporting the work he's doing and doing all that would really mean a lot. So if you guys do have the time, please check out Eddie Bell on Facebook or check out On Time Sunwear, please do. Sunwear is always on time. And yeah, thank you guys so much for, yeah, catch up. Dollar sign, let's go to work. But 
thank you all for coming on. Thank you all for watching. And um, guys, stay tuned for the next episode. A uh, couple more things are coming out as well. So stay tuned for that. And peace. Bye.